Hello, it's my my favorite too. Chapter 25. Getting ever so closer. Uh, uh, yeah, and school is almost out. So this is the last weekend that in between the school school um, week. I get out Wednesday. Anyway, so I'll have a lot more time. I don't have any work to do. <laughs> okay. So last off, I guess, what happened was Discord appeared. And now Lyra's a pony again. And now Discord's gonna try to mess around with the human race. Yep, perfectly normal day. So here we go. Chapter 25. Truth will out. For a while, all Lara could do was stand there. She looked at her tail, down at her hooves. At the edge of her vision, she could see the tip of her horn. But there wasn't any time to waste. She wasn't quite sure how long she had been unconscious. Lara kicked off the shoes from her back hooves. They didn't fit anymore, and they would only slow her down. She had tried to reorient herself, reminding herself which direction was home, and just started running. Well, galloping would be more accurate. Any minute now, she would wake up. She had to. There wasn't any way that Discord was here, in Philadelphia. Something fell into her eye, and she skidded to a halt, blinking it out. A few more followed. Thick, brown droplets. Pretty soon, puddles of chocolate milk had started to form, form on the road. Of course, just like he'd done in Ponyville. Lyra shook her head and started again. Her shirt and pants were loose and baggy, and they were getting soggy in the rain. They probably started to smell from all this milk. No, why was she thinking of that now? The lyre necklace, matching her cutie mark, had just reappeared on her hip. Flank, she corrected herself. Beat against her neck as she galloped alongside of the road towards home. She passed by, by a car that had stopped on the side of the road. She noticed that the tires were now square instead of round. Whoever had been driving must have left it there and continued on foot. Finally, Lyra reached, reached her house. No car in the driveway. Maybe she hadn't been out, out as long as she thought. Her mind went back to the abandoned vehicle with square wheels. She hadn't even seen what the things were like in town, but they must be bad. How were the humans reacting to whatever had happened? More importantly, how were her parents react when they came, out, when they came home and found her like this? There was no telling when exactly they would return. She'd deal with her parents and Chloe once they got here. If they were okay. For now, she put a final burst of speed and dashed up to the front porch. The key was in her pocket. Her first instinct was to reach out with a hand in and take it out, but obviously that wouldn't work. It took some effort to direct even a small amount of magical energy and lift the key ring out of her pocket, fit into the door, and then actually try to open it. It seemed to take forever. There was a reason why doorknobs in Equestria didn't actually turn. The door finally flung open, and she practically fell inside, glad to let out, glad to get out of the ring. She stopped to take a breath. With one back leg, she kicked the door closed behind her. Everything here was so big. She'd never been a human. She'd never been in a human home as a pony. She just remembered being in the Canterlot Castle a few moments, and how everything seemed smaller when she got on two legs. There was nothing, nothing here was meant for ponies. Without hands, she was pretty much useless right now. She lifted one foreleg and stared at the wet, matted green hair. It was an odd sensation, having this all over herself. How had she never been used to it? More importantly, what did she do now? Discord was out there. Her family would probably come back sooner or later. Based on the clock, she had gone less than an hour. It was better than what she had thought, but whenever they got here, they'd, she'd, come, she'd have to come clean with them all about the lies she'd been telling. She really didn't want to think about that. But first, she was dripping milk all over the floor. There was nothing she could do about Discord, but this was not the best impression to make. Lyra headed for the stairs, tripped on the first step with a small cry, 
and continued slower than before. These stairs were too narrow. It hadn't been a problem before, when she was a human. There were two showers up here. One was vertical, the other one had a bathtub. She knew she wouldn't fit in the upright one very comfortably, so she went for the other. She took off her neck she took her necklace off her head and let it fall onto the counter. Then she twisted her body and pulled off her wet clothes with some difficulty. It was hard, but using magic was too unwieldy. For some reason she recalled Bonbon asking her if wearing clothes all the time got to gotta be a hassle. Without hands, it did seem that way. There wasn't any choice but to use her magic to turn on the water. She struggled with the faucet for a while until she got blasted with cold water, then managed to turn the other side. She let out a sigh of relief and let the warm water clear her mind. Too much was happening too fast. Discord had somehow, somehow escaped again. She had brought him here, or at least opened the way for him. Humans were going extinct again. There was nothing she could do about that. There was nothing anybody could do without the elements of harmony. Clearing her mind had been a bad idea. She pushed the faucet back in, the, back in with her hoof to shut off the water and try levitating a towel towards herself. The basics of magic were slowly coming back to her. Her coat would still take some time to dry completely with all that wet fur, but at least she, she wasn't sticking anymore. Lyra headed into her bedroom to find some clean clothes. Sure, ponies didn't always wear them, but she still wanted to act human. Besides, she had been dressing herself every day months before she became human. She found a clean white shirt. She was proud of herself when she, be she managed to close the buttons with magic. The clothes were still too big, but she didn't care. As she pulled her shirt down over her head, she got a glimpse of her lyre on the dresser and her guitar stand next to that. She would probably never play guitar again, which made her wonder how her friends in Des Moines were dealing with Discord. It was hundreds of miles away. She wondered if the chaos had spread that far. Now she was dressed. She was clean enough, and there was nothing to do but brace herself for the inevitable. inevitable. She noticed her necklace glinting in the bathroom counter and tossed it back over her neck. It was something of a good luck charm at this point. Back in the Canterlot Castle, when she said goodbye to her adopted family and reassured them that everything would be safe in the human world. She paced down the hallway to her real mother's painting studio. It wasn't that she was going anywhere, she just couldn't sit still. An unfinished painting was there. It would be a book cover for some other author. Beyond it was a window overlooking the front house the front of the house, the long driveway leading to the road, where her dad was running up to the door, shielding his eyes from the chocolate milk rain. Lyra panicked. She shot out of the room, rounded the corner through the hallway, nearly tripping again, down, going down the stairs. She had just enough time to see this door start to open. Without even thinking, her horn glowed and the door slammed closed. She slammed her entire way against it and paused to catch her breath. Her eyes widened. What am I doing? She muttered. Still, she didn't step away from the door. Lyra, if you're in there, open the door. What's going on? It was her dad's voice. If he saw her. She didn't say anything. What could she say? Who's in there? Lyra, say something. I'm not sure what's going on out here, but there's something raining. The car broke down. I had to run here from... Dad? Uh, her voice is weak. Remember those stories I told Chloe about Equestria? Lyra? Good, you're home. Just open the door. He sounded relieved. It's really important. I need to tell you something. Now. We can talk inside. I know things are weird out here, but there's no reason to lock me out. She could tell from his tone that he was getting impatient. She slowly moved away. I'm sorry. Lyra said. She stared at the floor. Her father came inside. He glanced around for her. Lyra? What's... That's when he looked down. Whatever, whatever he had been about to say next, he couldn't manage to get it out after he saw a small green pony in place of his daughter. Lyra, on the other hand, started blurting out everything out all at once. 
I'm sorry. I never told you anything. I just wanted to be normal. I never wanted anything more than just a regular life as a human, and I thought you'd believe me if I said I forgot everything. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He couldn't say anything. He just stared at her. Then he managed to force out a single word. Lyra? It's really me. She looked up at him, feeling especially short now. She frowned. You're not mad at me, are you? You're a unicorn, he said dumbly. I really am a human, and I'm your daughter, but I came here from Equestria. It's all real, everything I told Chloe about. I was a unicorn for the most of my life. She pawed up the floor and her hoof awkwardly. I'm sorry I lied to you. Are you mad? He knelt down in front of her. Are you... Did you do those things? He glanced outside, where it was still raining. She shook her head. No, my magic can't do that. I wouldn't do that. I just want to be a human. Can you do magic? Well, yes, but... She let out an exhausted groan. That's not important now. It's discord. Everything came tumbling out again. He followed me here to find all the humans who were still around. And that's why it's raining chocolate milk and why he turned me back into... Her father cut her, her, father cut her off. Who? You're not making any sense. But something told her that he'd barely heard a word she said. And the way he was looking at her reminded her of the unicorns that were supposedly made up in his world. In this world. Lyra stopped. It's going to take some explanation. Could you just... Wait a minute, please. She turned and stumbled up the stairs again. She went straight to her bedroom and started digging through her drawers until she found her journal. It started to glow, and she headed back downstairs with it floating by her side. She felt like it took more effort than it did, than it used to just to lift it, but at least it was in the air. Her father had sat down in the living room and had his hand up to his forehead. He looked up wearily when she came back. Here, these are my notes. These are the notes I was taking when I lived in Equestria. I read a lot of things in books, but I also... Lyra noticed he was staring at the book floating in front of him. Go on, take it. How are you doing that? It's basic level magic. Oh. Her, lower, her eyes lowered. Um, I know that what you write about... I know what you write about, but magic really isn't anything too special. Most unicorns can't do much more than this. She nodded her head towards the book. It's floating in midair. How are you doing that? Lyra rolled her eyes. I learned this when I was seven. I told you, it's nothing special. You've been doing magic since you were Chloe's age? Lyra, how exactly did you turn into... He gestured her. He gestured at her with one hand. She took a deep breath. All those years ago, when I disappeared, I still don't know how, but I was taken to Equestria. It's that other world that I've told Chloe about. I wasn't making any of those stories up. I really knew those ponies. He nodded slowly. As for learning magic, most unicorns start a lot younger than that. I just caught on slowly, she shrugged. Humans aren't even supposed to be able to do magic, so I guess that's why it was so hard for me. I didn't know I was that until uh, too long ago. He hesitated and reached out and touched the cover of the old journal, as if he wasn't quite sure if it would be solid. If it would be solid. He let his hand close around it and took it from her. With some relief, she let go of it and the aura faded, maintaining that levitation spell had been hard work. Lyra lifted her head. Speaking of Chloe, where is she? And Mom? I already dropped Chloe off at the school when I started. When it started, I don't know what happened next. It was too confusing. Oh. It seemed as if her father was beginning to come back to his senses. That was good. But Lyra, the first thing I need to know is what's going on outside. The rain, all the flat tires. At times, I was almost certain that I saw street signs and mailboxes moving on their own. You know something about this, don't you? It's worse than I thought, she muttered to herself. What is? 
It's Discord. He's a spirit of chaos, and he used to be in Equestria, but he followed me here, and now... Alara caught herself talking too fast again. She slowed down. Back in Equestria, he, he caused humans to go extinct. It was a long time ago. I think he's trying to do that again, by turning them against each other. Extinct. Her father repeated that word, taking what it meant. But chocolate milk? Doesn't that seem kind of a strange joke? That's the worst part. It is a joke. To him. And this discord isn't human. Of course not. Humans couldn't do all that. We can't use magic. She looked up at her horn. Not normally, at least. So, all those years, you didn't know that you were... She shook her head. My other parents never told me that I was human. No. She looked at the book. I did research on humans, though. Deep down, I knew that I was. I knew what I was. Those are my notes. Lyra hopped onto the couch next to him and sat down. He looked at her in surprise. Is it normal for unicorns to sit like that? He said. Oh, um... I started doing this because I saw pictures of humans sitting this way. She looked down at herself. It's not as comfortable as I remember. He glanced down at the book again, then up at her. It sounds like there's a lot you need to tell me. About 16 years of it, Lyra said. But I guess I can't do anything else right now. She told him about the Grand Galloping Gala, stopping frequently to explain that what that was, and what Cadillac was like. She included as many of the details about Discord as she could remember. Of course, at the time, everything about Discord had been overshadowed by finding out what herself... finding out that she herself was a human. She couldn't really blame herself for wanting to block out everything about their extinction. Prince Celestia sent me back to this world a few months ago. I've been a human ever since. Until now, I mean, Lyra said. Her father seemed a bit more calm now. He, went, he gave an odd, uneasy smile. I never would have guessed that that was what happened to you when you vanished. We thought you were dead. It seemed more likely than anything else. Yeah, I never found out what happened. How that happened. It just did, I guess. Magic? Maybe. And right now, in our own home, too, he muttered. It's all a bit much to take, but you're here, and you're a unicorn, he sighed. I don't have any choice but to believe it. The only human I ever told was Andre, and she just thought I was crazy. I didn't have any proof then. He looked down at the journal again and turned it over, over in his hands. The binding was old-fashioned a hardcover, and a thick and thick parchment, parchment pages. More like an equestrian book than a human one. At this point, Lyra was familiar with the differences. He opened it up and started looking through it slowly, taking time to read the notes and scribble in the margins in between the drawings. These are all of the studies I did about humans. I found a few books in the library. My other dad was the head librarian there. Lyra washed over his shoulder. These are the ones I got back when I was living with, in Ponyville with Bon Bon. He glanced up. Who? My roommate. She was an earth pony. She didn't really like that I talked about humans all the time. She washed and turned a few more pages. He stuffed on a rough, rough sketch of the city. This looks like downtown. How did you know about this? Those are based on the dreams I had. Cities like Philadelphia were never in the books, since equestrian humans never got that far. But I still knew about this world, she said. I must have been remembering when I used to live here. It was such a long time ago, though. That's definitely interesting. He looked through the m more of the drawings. Lyra noticed that the rain had stopped hitting the window. He seemed to have a real fixation on hands. He looked down sad she looked down sadly. Yeah, you probably would understand since you've always had them. But that's the best part of becoming human. Getting fingers of my own. 
I could play my lyre like it was meant to be. It was invented by the Greeks, right? Our ancestors. She smiled. I always just wanted to be a human. And I was, for a few months anyway. He was studying her notes closely. Lyra. Equestria clearly isn't part of this world. No, of course not. She tilted her head, giving him an odd look. You know about Greece? It's weird. A lot of countries I read about were the same. I didn't realize it until I was here, so it was too late to ask Princess Celestia. Her voice trailed off. I don't understand it. It just happened. He nodded and looked back, back down at her journal. She noticed what page he was on. It was a highly detailed sketch of a pair of hands, one on each side, one on each page of the spread. This is actually when I started taking notes by hand. See how my writing improved? And it was easier to get those details into the drawings. I found out when I could actually manage the quill better with my fingers than with magic. In an odd way, it was exciting to get, getting to share this with a human, with her dad. This is when you became human? He said. Well, no, that was a little later. She stared at the ceiling. I did a little experimenting with magic. He stared at her. What do you mean? I told you, hands were pretty exciting, a pretty exciting concept back then. They still are, really. What did you do? She avoided his eyes. She avoided his eyes. I'd rather not say. He closed the journal and sat, sat it to the side. For a moment, he stared out the window into the backyard. You know, it looks like it calmed down. What? Lara lifted her head. That can't be right. Discord wouldn't just be gone. But you're still a unicorn. She stood up and trotted over to the window and stared into the backyard. It was eerie how quiet it was. I don't know why it would stop. I can't help but think that maybe... She let out a gasp. What? What's wrong? Discord said something about a larger city he was heading for. Maybe he didn't mean Philadelphia. Are there bigger, bigger cities around here? Philadelphia isn't that big of a city. He could be headed anywhere. New York or Washington. He sat there for a long time with his head in his hands. Lara leaned forward, but didn't say anything. What was there to say? If Discord is as dangerous as you say... He is, Lara said. I told you, he's already driven us to extinction once. Yes, but you've been into Equestria. You know more about him than anyone else. He thought for a moment, then asked, Didn't you say he broke free a year ago? Yeah, but Twilight and her friends took care of that. They used the elements of harmony, Lara explained. Did Chloe ever tell you about Nightmare Moon? The name rings a bell. It was the same thing that time. He nodded thoughtfully. How exactly do you use those elements? Me? No, I can't, Lara sighed. The elements are harmony are the only thing that can stop him, and that was... And that was all Twilight and her friends. I never had anything to do with that. I was just an ordinary unicorn. Most of us never had to do anything like that. So those artifacts are the only power that can stop him? He seemed thoughtful. It seems common enough in stories. And only certain heroes can wield them. This isn't one of your books. This is real life, Lara said. Even if that is how it works. She admitted. That's what makes it difficult. I take it there's no other way to fight him. If you're talking about using human weapons, that's the worst thing that we could do. Humans can't just take all of those armies and bombs and just give them to him. And yet, that's probably what will happen before long. What do you mean? He's a threat. What other way can we deal with him? You say that's a bad idea, but nobody else knows what you do. Lyra sighed. Yeah, but what I know is that humans can't stop him. We're only making him more powerful. There is nothing else to say. 
The worst part was that Lyra knew that Discord had what, what Discord had said was true. Coming to the human world was what caused them to cross over here. It was really all her fault. The television turned on. Her dad picked up the remote and changed it to the news. A human reporter was standing in the middle of a street, drenched with milk in front of what was left of a building. The walls had vanished, and the rooms inside stood intact in the middle of the lot. She glanced down at her necklace. All she could think about was what that day in Canterlot. Her horn glowed as she reached for it, and her dad watched with interest. Magic interest him. And that was understandable. He'd written about it for years and never seen any never seen any until today. That was when she felt something odd. She let a small noise of surprise and her necklace dropped back down. What's wrong? her father asked. I'm not sure, she admitted. That's never happened before. With one hoof, she gently prodded the necklace, but it seemed harmless now. You've always worn that. Where did it come from? Her father said. The chain doesn't look like it's the right size for a pony. She shook her head. It was a gift from the princess, right after she made me human. Princess Celestia. He was catching on, but it was clear to him up until now that he'd never given Lyra's story as much serious consideration. She's the most powerful unicorn Equestria, as well as its ruler. Lyra tilted her head. Well, not exactly a unicorn. She has, w she has wings, too. She's about as tall as you are, not to mention she's thousands of years old. Lyra had bent down to examine the necklace more closely. The sensation when she lifted it up towards herself. It hadn't happened when she first taken it off, but... You really spoke to a unicorn who was thousands of years old? He mused. Yeah. Human rulers don't live that long, do they? He gave a shaky, nervous laugh. <laughs> Things are different here. But as I was saying, a piece of jewelry given to you by a powerful, magical being, it doesn't seem like it would just be a simple gift. What are you saying? Lara looked up at him. I guess I never actually used magic with it before, but that's not how things work in Equestria. There aren't enchanted objects anywhere like in your books. Hesitantly, she started to lift, up, lift it up over her neck again for a better look. Besides, I'm not even sure what it would. Well, looks like Lyra's going to be Twilight for a few, uh, <laughs> for a few minutes right now. That's what I think is going to happen. I haven't, read the, I haven't read the next part, but... Oh, dear. Well, yeah, that's pretty... The next chapter will be split into two parts, because um, it's like 5,000 5, words. Or, actually... Nah. Anyway, thanks for listening.